American Farmland Trust and its partners are developing a new and innovative model to reduce nutrient and soil sediment runoff on leased farmland in the Great Lakes region. By engaging women landowners, their operators, and farm retailers, this team is expanding the use of conservation practices to improve soil health and reduce runoff. These videos document the experiences of the women landowners and their tenant operators in early demonstrations in Ohio and New York. My name is Chris Swartz. I farm in Wood County. It's in the Western Lake Erie Basin. Uh, I have been farming for close to 40 years, I guess. Uh, I'm a graduate of Ohio State. I have a degree in ag engineering. Uh, all grain on my farm, no, no livestock. Been involved with Southern Water Districts for a long time. Been, uh, on the board here in Wood County for 25 years. I'm the past uh, president of the Ohio Federation of Soil and Water Conservation Districts. That's a mouthful. Uh, and then I've been uh, on a lot of task force and things about uh, the water quality issues in the lake, the uh, harmful algal blooms. And uh, I'm a late believer in conservation and conservation practices. In Ohio, especially in this, this basin, we're all about uh, phosphate, controlling phosphate coming out. Uh, leaving the farms, uh, the har harmful algal blooms the, in uh, Lake Erie has been uh, pretty devastating to a lot of the industry up there at times. We're making some strides, but it, uh, like everything in farming, it's not an overnight uh, cure. A lot of farms I've farmed for two and three generations of the same family, so I'm pretty lucky. Um, on, on the farms I farm, we have uh, 122 acres of CRP filter strips. Pretty proud of that. I, I have a lot of uh, landowners who have really bought into that and uh, I think that's a great practice to keep uh, tillage and, and fertilizers away from the streams. But rental lands that, that change over very often, uh, conservation practices really don't have an immediate payoff. Sometimes they have a five to ten year uh, window until they're really going to be beneficial. So if ground is changing every two or three years it's, it's hard for a farmer to make that investment and it's hard for a, a a uh, landowner too, if they're changing people all the time to really see a benefit from conservation. So I think uh, any kind of uh, incentive or practice that could encourage more long-term relationships between farmers and landlords would uh, benefit conservation. What's really helped me is that I have a long-term relationship with all of them. Um, I think we have a mutual trust. And I, I think uh, I think I treat every acre like it's my own, and I think they believe that too. Uh, they they know that uh, I'm not here short term. I'm gonna gonna do the best for their ground, and, and sometimes it, it's a little step backward before we take a step forward. But uh, they've been super uh, supportive, and uh, I can't say enough about my landlords. A lot of them have been involved in farming with their fathers or their husbands. Um, to varying degrees. Uh, I think there's a, an education process for the farmers to, to really uh, reach out to their women landowners and explain some things um, that they may just assume they know. They may assume they know things about tillage and planting and fertility that may not really be there with some of the women landowners because their their husbands or maybe their fathers took care of it. Um, I think the women are just as involved with that or interested in it. I think uh, my women landowners really probably even embrace the soil health and, and that, that type of issue more than my male uh, landowners. They, they really like that. Um, a lot of communication with your landlord and explain to them how important conservation is to, to you and to them. Uh, I think sometimes, you know, monetarily it's not really evident that it's really beneficial to some landlords, but I think long term, I, I'm a big believer in the soil health initiative. Uh, I think uh, the conservation practices will increase their soil organic matter, and I think that's something that some landlords ought to look at more, that uh, what, what's the quality of their ground going into a relationship with a farmer and how, how it is improved or declined mm -hmm. during that time when a certain farmer's on their ground. I hope Ohio can can stay uh, with a really vibrant ag industry. I, mean, I think you know we need to educate our, our urban and suburban neighbors about what farming is and the challenges is 
what they are and we're trying to do the best we can but sometimes there's a little disruption because of agriculture i mean we're we're noisy we we create dust uh, we tie up the roads at times we don't like to but that happened especially in ohio we have a great network of soil and water districts and you know we have technicians we have education specialists uh, we have a lot of women working in our offices and, and sometimes the women landowners I think have a little hesitancy to, to maybe approach one of our male technicians because they don't want to seem naive or uninformed and I think sometimes they feel more comfortable talking to some of the, the, the females in our office and I, I think that's a great thing. The big thing is communication and, and talk to them all the time and tell them why you're doing what you're doing and ask them what you need to be doing for them.